This video is brought to you by Audible. Immortal Phoenix Rising. All right, let's start from the top. Terrible name. Absolutely terrible. Originally, this was called Gods and Monsters until Monster Energy actually sued Ubisoft or at least made some kind of complaint about the name because apparently people would confuse Monster Energy drinks with whatever this game is and then the developers changed it. They say it was a creative choice, but who the hell is going to choose Immortal Phoenix Rising? Awful, awful. Anyway, despite that, I played this game for four hours at Ubisoft HQ in Sydney. I will tell you, I really, really enjoyed this game. I liked it a lot. I played for four hours and it just flew by. I had a fantastic time. I don't think this is any kind of game of the year nomination. It's not gonna blow the doors off the industry, but I think it's gonna be a really fun, enjoyable, open worldy sort of all ages adventure and i think that everything that it was trying to do it succeeded in and i'm legitimately excited to actually play the full game in december whenever it releases yeah i mean i'm as surprised as you are i know i know no one wants to hear that this looks good i know that i i, I get it but i'm telling you I had fun with it that's it so let's 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 get into some detail and talk more about immortal phoenix rising So the premise, essentially it's a story being told by Prometheus to Zeus who needs his help with Typhon, the big baddie of the Greek mythology underworld thingy. He's doing stuff, Zeus wants to stop him, he needs Prometheus' help and so the story being told is of you, Phoenix, and the way you crash land on the shore and uh, you start your adventure from there. There is a character creation thing that you can do, you can play as a man or a woman and you can change their voice and their appearance and whatever else. I made a very serious looking character, obviously. I took this very seriously. These gods are all scattered throughout the map. There are seven different regions to explore. I had access to two of them. The starter region is really just a, you know, basic starter zone where you get into groups with things, learning the controls, unlocking your weapons and a few abilities. And then I ended up in Aphrodite's region, which is this beautiful, verdant, green, endless as far as you can see, just incredible environment. And I guess this is probably a good time to talk about just how beautiful this world is. It's a really stunning world, man. Like, it's just, you know, you get to a point where you are in the Hall of the Gods, which is essentially the central hub. You can kind of see most of the map from that point. And it's incredible. It just goes forever. It's so full of detail, so full of personality. Yeah, I just loved soaking up this world and just walking around it. I mean, you're seeing it for yourself as you're looking at it. I just think it looks like a beautiful game. And, and can I say, by the way, it actually ran beautifully. I played it on PC. Ubisoft games never run beautifully on PC. Ever, ever, ever. Like, full stop. It's not a thing, okay? So for them to have, been, to have made this game and for it to already run well on PC, it's not even out yet. I mean, I played Assassin's Creed Valhalla and I played Watch Dogs Legion on PC prior to release. Performance was, you know, pretty Ubisoft. <laughs> it was pretty shaky, but this just ran silky smooth, zero issues whatsoever. Uh, one of the best preview builds I've ever played, in fact, in terms of stability and performance. So that bodes well for the future. Regardless, I love the look of this game. I think it looks fantastic and uh, that's the world. What are you actually doing in this world though? Well, yeah, it's a Ubisoft game, so you could expect towers. In fact, the very first thing you're asked to do when you get dropped on the map is go and scout out the zone and you climb up to the top of a tower and you then scout it out. And you do this by sort of zooming in and then uh, you look around the map. It's kind of similar to what they've seen in Assassin's Creed in the past. Map markers then become available for you to, you know, follow. But you can also just stumble across stuff randomly. There's a big focus on exploration in this game. And I think it's it feels very different to the likes of Assassin's Creed or, or even like, you know, Ghost Recon and whatever. Because the map is far more dense, you know. Those games are very much like, hey, we've got a map there's tons of empty space and there are markers to tell you where the things are in this game the map is so dense that you can't go any more than like 20 meters without essentially bumping into something it's just a very different sort of experience and it really does promote this feeling of exploration like i actually am looking around this world to see what is to my left and what is to my right because there could be something there, you know, and that's not a thing you have to do in Valhalla or Odyssey before that or Origins because the map is so large that, you know, you know where the things are because you have to be guided by the markers. I really enjoyed just getting lost in this map, checking things out, exploring 
caves and puzzles and whatever else. I just found it a really rewarding loop. It's definitely some stuff you've done before, no question. It's classic Ubisoft, but I think it's a very good rendition of classic Ubisoft. Coming back to those activities on the map, there are things like time trial challenges where you have to get from one point to the next. You have to like play songs on this giant lyre. There are certain combat challenges where you'll, you'll stumble across a group of enemies guarding a chest. And there are also these vaults of Tartarus, which look very much like one of those Bowser levels in Mario 64. These vaults of Tartarus uh, very much reminded me of the shrines from Breath of the Wild, uh, where you had to complete sort of physics-based challenges, and then eventually at the end you got a stamina chunk, you know, increasing your stamina. We will come back to the comparisons to Breath of the Wild later because that's a pretty big topic of conversation when it comes to this game. In addition to the map markers and the stuff to explore and find and do, there's also of course a main quest where you are essentially trying to bring down Typhon by freeing these gods. I liked what they were doing with this. I was The intro to the game was with Hermes and he kind of guided me and taught me what was what on the map and my abilities and whatever else. Then the next quest chain in, involved Aphrodite and she was kind of like imprisoned in this tree and I had to free her and I actually had to sort of recreate her creation myth by kind of rolling a pearl into the ocean which is the story of how Aphrodite was born so that was cool I like that I think that that shows that they're leaning into the Greek mythology while also thinking about how to do some quests that aren't just hey kill everything on the map and also it's kind of cool playing another Greek mythology game after playing Hades for so long because you feel like you've just brushed up on all that stuff and now you're digging back into those same characters getting a different rendition of that personally I like that Combat. Now, I really enjoyed the combat in this game, but it's very simple, okay? The way it works is that you have Achilles' sword, which is your light attack, and then you have an axe. I forget the name of the god, but it's an axe belonging to a god, and that's your heavy attack. You can combine these, you know, light attack and heavy attack combos. Later on, you'll unlock sort of like an aerial juggle kind of thing where you can hit them into the air and then air juggle them. There's a DCS's bow, which you can fire off. There's also a special arrow ability where you can actually control the arrow while it's flying. There's additional abilities unlock later on as well. So for example, there's Athena's shield charge. There's uh, Ares like spear phalanx and and then there's Hephaestus' hammer, which is super satisfying to use, by the way. Check this out. Combat has a lock-on. You swing your heavy attack and light attack, and you mix in some of the abilities, and you dodge. There's a sort of, like, witch time effect when you do execute a perfect dodge, and you get yourself a little bonus window with which to, uh, you know, do more damage. Overall, it felt very tight, very snappy, very responsive. Again, it's simple, though. I like, don't expect very deep, sophisticated combat, but expect it to be enjoyable. Again, coming back to the Assassin's Creed comparison, played Valhalla, enjoyed the combat, cool sort of spectacle but really janky and really animation led you know it just kind of it just looks a bit goofy sometimes i enjoyed this combat in in immortal phoenix rising more than i appreciated that um valhalla combat so you know do with that what you will there is a very big focus on progression in this game in the sense that you're always unlocking new abilities or different talents for those abilities the hall of the gods is a sort of training center for yourself there's literally like a barbell where you'll do weights to get stronger. You can spend Charon coins on more of your talents. You can do daily challenges that give you access to skins. There's also an in-game shop as well that was not available during this. There are gonna be microtransactions in this, but of course Ubisoft don't provide any details on that at this point. So watch this space. We don't know what those are gonna be yet. But yes, very big focus on collecting all the things. There's also a light gear game in this as well. So while you'll always have Achilles sword, you might get a different variant of that sword that gives you, you know, slightly different stats. You know, nothing major yet. Maybe the, the sort of higher end gear, more legendary gear is more profound in its impact. But right now it's pretty basic stuff. It's a basic RPG light gear game like you've come to expect from pretty much every Ubisoft game at this point. So yeah, that's the overview. Let's obviously talk about the Zelda comparisons. Now this game is very, very, very Breath of the Wild. Like it just is. I know we were recently talked about like Genshin Impact being Breath of the Waifu, but not really. Like this game right here, Immortal Phoenix Riding is actually Breath of the Wild but just different. So it's got like each of the gods that you need to free so you can harness their power against the evil dude. Typhon's energy is this kind of red 
it just looks very Breath of the Wild. You unlock the Heracles Bracer, which lets you levitate objects. You have those sort of like Tartarus realm areas, which are basically puzzled like shrines. There's the climbing with the stamina meter. There's the gliding. I mean, literally when you finish the tutorial section, the way you get out of the tutorial section is by gliding out of there because you unlock your wings and then you can glide safely into the next zone. Okay, so yes, this is absolutely like, hey, what did Zelda do? And like copying the homework kind of thing, okay? But that doesn't mean it's bad. It just means that it's like unashamed of its inspirations, okay? It would have been possible to make this game a Zelda ripoff, but make it badly. I think they've done a sort of Zelda ripoff, but they've done a pretty good job. And they've kind of instilled their own uh, personality their own distinct combat, their own take on exploration. The density of the world map is very different. This kind of feels like a Zelda spin-off to me in a way, in the sense that like, like, hey, we've got this core thing that really works. What if we just turned a whole bunch of dials, okay? A lot of people are gonna find that really offensive and they're gonna say, oh, it sucks that they just copied it and whatever else, it's terrible. Fair enough, I get that, I really do. But at the same time, I played this game for four hours. It flew by, it was really fun, it was really accessible. As I said, it's not going to blow anyone away, but I think it's just gonna be a really nice, relaxing, I don't know, probably 20 to 40 hour adventure that has a really great all ages appeal. You know, you could play this with your kid if you had a kid, you could hand it to a nine year old and go have some fun with it. But simultaneously, I, as a grown ass man, maybe, uh, had fun with it too. It very much reminded me of the classic PS2 adventure games of, you know, Jack and Daxter and Ratchet and Clank and those sorts of games that we don't get anymore. They don't exist now, you know, and this is one of those. So, as I said, I know a lot of people aren't going to like it, but I really enjoyed it and I genuinely look forward to when it comes out. And uh, that's it. That's all I got for you. Hope you enjoyed the video. I'll see you next time. Goodbye. <laughs>